It will all go very quickly. I'll see what I can do with the speech in mitigation. That means tell the magistrates what a good driver you've been in the past and so on. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you Mr. Miller by any chance? Uh, yes, miss. Uh, my name's Peterson. I'm representing you. Oh. You've left it a little late. Uh, well, we got lost, miss, and I didn't want to take any chances. Not with a slot hanging over me. Uh, shall we go into court and sit down? We can run through your statement. Oh, me, Miss Peterson. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's all quite simple. Guilty pleas never take long. Thank you, pardon, Miss. I said guilty pleas never take long. I'm not. Not what? Guilty, Miss. So why should I plead guilty? But you already have, Mr. Miller, here on this form. Oh, I'm not talking about any forms. You're talking about this one. You filled it in yourself. Do you intend to plead guilty or not guilty? Answer guilty. And then you signed it. Robert Arthur Miller, that is your signature? Well, yes, miss, but I rang the motoring association after I sent that off and I told them I wasn't guilty. It isn't down here? Well, they said they'd informed the police and they told me to tell, uh, you. Then you'd better tell me quickly, Mr. Miller. The court's late in sitting as it is. Oh. Well, uh, when I was nicked, I was doing 68 miles an hour. I can prove it. Mr. Miller, what is this all about? Well, so the thing is, I've been done for speeding twice already, and if I get done again, I can lose my licence. Probably. But are you now changing your plea in order to avoid a third conviction? Oh, no, miss. <laughs> Why did you plead guilty in the first place? Well, because my mates told me if I pleaded guilty, the court might let me off lightly. They were right. Why have you changed your mind? Well, because I didn't do it. I couldn't have done. So I should let those bloody blue bottles get away with it. I should call them police if I were you, Mr. Miller. The bench prefer it. Oh, sorry, miss. But I mean it. All oh, right, you mean it. But it puts me in a very awkward position. I only agreed to take these cases on the understanding you all pleaded guilty. Does that mean you can't defend me, miss? No, it doesn't. You can't. Stand up. Come on. Is it your own car? Yes, miss. I got a mileage allowance. And you say you couldn't have done it? That's right. By that, you mean you couldn't have been driving at 75 to 83 miles an hour on the M87? Right. And you can prove it? Right again. How? I've got an engine knock. I've had it for weeks. If I do more than 68 miles an hour, that car of mine makes a noise as loud as a jumbo jet, and there wasn't any noise. I see. Was anybody with you in the car? No, miss. Did you mention this knock to the police? Well, it never occurred to me, but it's true. I mean, all you've got to do is drive the bloody thing yourself and you can put up signs. Never mind the knock for the moment. Tell me what happened when the police stopped you. I rode still down in there. Forget about this. Just tell me. All right. Uh, I was on my way up to Northumberland on the M87. Alone? I told you. I was in the middle lane doing 65. And I noticed a police car behind me. A Triumph. Well, just then a white Lancia went past in the outside lane and he was really moving. So the police Triumph took off after him and I thought, well, that's that. Except that three miles further on, another police car stopped me and told me that the Triumph had reported me for speeding as well. Only I wasn't. I mean, there wasn't any sign of a knock. Four to one. Two of them followed you, two of them stopped you. I'm sorry, miss. Blue bottles, Mr. Miller. Well, I've just it's told you. It's your word against theirs. Come on, and get rid of that. Field Hunter. Uh, Mr. Field, please. I'm sorry, he's out to lunch. Who's calling? Miss Peterson. Oh, yes, Miss Peterson. Uh, can you tell me where he's lunching? Sorry, I don't know. Where does he usually lunch? Well, there's a little restaurant just around the corner from the courts. He may be there. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye. We're just about on. Too late, I'm afraid. I'll have to ask for an adjournment. Robert Arthur Miller. Robert Arthur Miller, this way, sir. Robert Arthur Miller. Robert Arthur Miller, you are summons that on Monday the 7th of February on the M87 motorway in Please, the area... Please, not guilty, Your Worships. Very well, Miss Peterson. Unfortunately, because of the obstruction of the defendant and the fact that the Lancia was doing well over 90 miles well, per hour... I understand hour, you to say the defendant deliberately obstructed the police inspector? Uh, no, sir, not deliberately. He was just in the way and they lost the Lancia. I see. Uh, but they had observed the speed of the defendant. Uh, over some uh, seven-tenths of a mile, his speed varied between 75 and 83 miles per hour. 
I call Sergeant Barker. After lunch, I think, don't you? We'll sit again at 1.30. The court will rise. Uh, what now, miss? I'll have to get you somebody else. The trouble is, I have a case in the county court this afternoon and I can't be in two places at once. But you're the one I want. It won't make all that much difference. I don't believe that. Please, miss. I'll do the best I can for you. Oh, can't get that bad. Can't it? You know this game, love. One slip and you're out. But it's just speeding. Yeah, just. So that I've been done for speeding what twice already. If I get done again, I could lose my license. Then what do I do? Did you tell Miss Peterson that? Yeah, of course I told her. I also told her about the knock. That's what's important. But that only happened last week. No, Patsy. You're wrong. That is since January. Be careful, Bob. I've got to keep my license. Why don't you let me speak up for you? No, like... no, love. I'm in enough trouble. Thanks, anyway. In even more trouble if she doesn't turn up this afternoon. I'm sorry, I must go. But you can't. Not now. I mean, the case isn't over yet. They've heard all the witnesses. You've given your evidence. They've retired to consider their verdict. I can't stay to do any more. What happens if they find me guilty? Who's going to speak for me? You'll have to do it yourself. You were paid to defend me. Mr Miller, I took your case because you pleaded guilty on the form. That's ten minutes of my time. You've had three and a half hours. In another court, a man is waiting for me whose whole livelihood is at stake and he has no one to speak for him. Robert Arthur Miller. We have listened with great care to the evidence. We find the case proved. As to sentence, you'll pay a fine of £20. Has he a clear licence? No, sir. Two previous endorsements. I see. We'd better have a word, Mr. Roxley. Hello? You're back early, Bob? Yeah. Nice change. How are you going to give us a kiss? Got my rubber gloves on. Story of our lives, isn't it? You've been drinking. That's right. Get in bed. Half an hour ago. Well, I'm going to drink some more. We both are. You shouldn't, Bob. You know you shouldn't. No. We should. Yeah. You know I don't like it. I think you better try. And Take those bloody gloves off. What's the matter, Bob? What shall be the matter? I, I just fancied a drink with you. You're drinking it worries me. Why? Oh, not here. I don't mean that. It's nice when you have a drink here. I mean, not all that much at home, are you? <laughs> that's very funny. Do you know that's very funny? <laughs> Laugh at me, Bob. I'm serious. I don't like you drinking when you're away. It gets you into trouble. By well, the car, I mean. What else would I mean? You're telling it, love? All right, then, women, too. Well, I know you don't mean it, but when you've had a few, you... I what? You forget. Forget what? Me, the kids. Oh, well, that's all finished. I told you, love, you've no need to worry about that anymore. Or the car. I'll tell you why. I haven't got a car. <laughs> Don't talk daft. Have a look out the back. Go on, old have a look out the back. Where's the car, then? See the car? You had an accident. No, love. I sold it. Sold it? Mm. Not a bad price, either. Four fifty. I don't believe you. Don't you? Yeah? 
Here you are, my love. There's a check. Well, if you go mad or something, if you don't have a car, you can't have a job. I know that, love. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Audrey, you're not that daft. You've been fired. We didn't get that far. I, uh, I resigned. But why? Because I've been done for speeding and they've stopped me bloody license for six months, that's why. Oh, my God. Bob, love, why didn't you tell me? Because it wasn't true. Honestly, it wasn't. I thought I could prove it. I was, I was sure I could, so I, I, why should I bother you? Why didn't you get a lawyer? Yeah. The Motoring Association got me a lawyer. So, she said, uh, I'm sorry. And off she popped. Rotten bitch. Maybe. You should have heard her in court, though, love. She was bloody good while she was there. She certainly knew what she was doing. In more ways than one. Now, wait, Bob. Oh, God. Wait, I said, and it's all I said. Oh, what? Are you sure you didn't do it? I swear Why to... don't you go and see her? It's all over, love. They found me guilty. She walked out on you this morning. She owes you something. Why don't you get her to appeal? At her price? What have we used for loot? What you got for the car? That's all we've got we'll to live on. We'll take all of it. Listen, if you don't get your licence back, I'm going to have to go out to work and leave you looking after the kids. Is that what you want? No, oh, of course not. Well, it's what you're going to get if you don't appeal. It's all of a gamble, Audrey. Well, you're the one that backs the horses. Anyway, you might get costs. Come on, love, let's think about it. Excuse me, Miss Peterson. Mr. Miller. Have you a moment, please, miss? Of course. You heard what happened? Yes. You got this fellow better deal than I got. I did the best I could in the time available, Mr. Miller. Oh, yes, certainly. I'm not disputing that. Um, would you like a cigarette, miss? No, thank you. Do you mind if I do? No. Well, uh, this is a bit difficult. I mean, um, I was rude to you the last time. We were both under pressure. Yeah, pressure. Well, it was my job, you see. Oh, of course. You're a commercial traveller, aren't you? Well, I was, anyway, only we call them sales representatives. Here, use this. Thank you. I'm with what they call a commando sales force. Commando? Yeah. They're not kidding, either. Brutal it is. Sell or get out. Make 12 calls a day. Be sure you sell when you get there or else. Sounds frightening. Oh, it can be. But it's exciting, too. I mean, God, it must be. What would I, what would I have done it for? Eleven years I was at it, Miss Peterson. Some of them don't last five, and now I'm out. You've lost your job? My firm's got a fixed rule, one disqualification, and that's it. But if I could get my licence back... Mr Miller... I want to appeal, Miss Peterson. I want you to appeal for me. You'd be making a big mistake. But I didn't do it, and I need my job. On the evidence presented, you'd only lose again. You disappoint me, Miss. I thought you'd want to help me. You weren't the easiest of clients, Mr Miller. Thank you. I could be. I don't believe that for a moment. Well, well, can I ask, why would I lose again? Your word against theirs. My advice is not to waste your money. Look, g give me five minutes, miss. Please, just five minutes. Is that too much to ask? Very well. Five minutes, Usher, please. Thank you. Uh, my wife, she's been marvellous about this. I don't just mean she's gone back to work. She's, she's been understanding, all that. I'm glad to hear it, but I don't see... Oh, it is, it is relevant, believe me. You see, uh, we've had our troubles. You mean other women? Yes, other women. Oh, I don't know. You go on the road too long, you, you start raving mad. Take what I was flogging. Brash. I beg your pardon? Men's toiletries. Ah. Be a brash man. Aftershave, talc, deodorant, cologne, you go about lathered in the stuff. Really? 
So all you talk about all day and night to a bunch of old chemists that don't want to listen anyway, so at night all you want is a woman, any woman. Well, just, just to, to talk to her. And your wife's a hundred miles away. And... <laughs> I don't suppose you ever met anybody like that. On the contrary, I know someone exactly like that. Well, I feel sorry for him. We all behave like bloody fools. I did anyway. I'm over it now, mind you. Except, uh... Go on. There was somebody in the car with me. I see. Well, she's a colleague, really, and that's all. Now. But if my wife was to hear... Did you tell your colleague about the knock? Yes, I did. And there's another thing, too. That copper that charged me, uh, uh Snell. What about him? He, he didn't read out all my statement. I told him about the knock, too. But you told me you never mentioned it to anyone. I, I, I was afraid that if I made too much of a song and dance of it, it would come out about Patsy being in the car with me. If you appeal, she'll have to give evidence. Yes, I know. So you'd better tell your wife. Does that mean you'll help? First, you must see your solicitor. I've got one. Oh, yes, you have. He represents the Motoring Association. His name is Stopes. It'll cost me, won't it? Yes. Oh, well, the best always does. See you in court, then. <laughs> Did you say how much? No, I, I don't think she's allowed to. That's um, all up to the solicitor. But she reckons you've got a good case. She does now, yeah. What do you mean now? Well, after we had a chance to talk it all out. Um, in the magistrate's court, you see, it was all such a rush that I didn't tell her half the things I should have done. What things? Uh, well, we talked about you. I told her how marvellous she'd been. That was nice of you, Bob. No, I mean it. I've got my gloves on. It's all right, it doesn't matter. You'd better tell me, Bob. It's something bad, isn't it? No. No, it's, it's not bad. Uh, I had a girl with me in the car. What girl? Patsy. Now, please, Audrey, just but let me explain. What have been through? All you promised. I, I was... Last night you made love to me and I let you. And all the time you've been going with you'd probably just come from me. Audrey, will you listen to what? me? What? I was giving her a lift and that's all. She hasn't got a car of her own, I Yes, suppose. she has, but it broke down outside Morpeth. She had it repaired there. I was driving her back to pick it up. Well, why you? Why couldn't it have been somebody else? Because the sales manager told me to. Anyway, I had some display cut. Oh, what's the use? If that's all there was to it, why didn't you tell me all this before? Because we'd still be in the same mess. You still wouldn't believe me. Oh, it's, it's not good, Audrey. I can't live like this. I well, can't. you just have to. I've told... It's the way I live. I've done nothing. Would have to be that one, wouldn't it? Oh, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking I'm afraid, Bob. I'm afraid of her. I didn't like your pickups. But I wasn't afraid of them. Look. Audrey, you've got no reason. Haven't I? She's as lot like I was before I had your kids. <laughs> Living it up, aren't we? The condemned man ate a very hearty meal. Oh, is it that bad? Well, we'll know tomorrow, when we go and see Stubbs. What will I have to say? Well, the engine knock. You haven't forgotten about the engine knock. No, of course not. What did I tell you about the engine knock? Ah, uh, now, let me see. You said that if you took the car above 68, it made a noise like a jumbo jet. That's my girl. I missed you, Bob. You get your story straight, and I'll be back. Full time. Oh, I've got to a proper drink. It's all over, Bob. Yes, you're right. God, I'm nervous. All you have to do is tell the truth. I told the truth last time. Not all. Oh, for God's sake, don't stop. I'm sorry. 
keep thinking about all that money. Huh. 125 quid. I wonder how much that Miss Peterson gets. Uh, about half of it, I suppose. Let's hope she's worth it. I think she will be. This is one thing written all over her. What's that? She hates to lose. Come on, we better go. Uh, Audrey. Look, Patsy's here. Now, try and be nice to her, will you, please? Because she's the best chance I've got. <laughs> well, hello there, fellas. Hello. Hello, Patsy. Hello. hello, Mrs. Miller. Hello, Miss Turner. Bob and I are very grateful. Oh, don't to... worry. It'll be all right. I know it will. Good luck, Bob. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, well, uh, um... Yes. See you there. <laughs> well, Harriet. Hello, Charlie. At it again, are we? Do you know my instructing solicitor, Mr. Stokes? Yes, of course, we're old Indeed. friends. You're going to make me work today, aren't you? I hope so. Is that your lady over there? Yes. Who's she got with her? Well, the one in the middle is my solicitor, Stokes. No, no, the other one. That'll be the, <laughs> the bloke for the other side. Well, they shouldn't be laughing like that. Not now. It's as if they were friends. Well, they probably are. Well, that's not right, Bob. It's just a job to them. More like a game or something. It's not a game to us. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I call Patricia Turner. Was Mr. Miller exceeding the speed limit? Well, the police said he was. I'm asking you, Miss Turner. Well, I, I didn't look at the speedometer, but it certainly didn't seem like it. And anyway, he couldn't have been. Why not? Because Mr. Miller said that if he took his car above 68, it made a noise like a jumbo jet. And did you hear a noise like a jumbo jet? No, it, it was just the normal engine. All the time? All the time. Thank you, Miss Turner. Miss Turner, why didn't you mention this when Mr. Miller was charged? Nobody asked me. Not even Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller was too upset to ask anybody anything. But he did tell you about the engine knock? Oh, yes. Before he was charged? Yes. I agree with you, Miss Peterson. The evidence is unsatisfactory. The evidence on both sides is unsatisfactory. Reluctantly, we must conclude that it would be unwise to convict. The appeal is allowed. But we will make no order for costs in this case. The court will now rise. Very nice, Harriet. Very nice indeed. Better luck next time. And Mrs. Miller, I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, no, no, no costs. This is costing me 125 quid. You certainly have to pay for justice. That wasn't justice, Mr. Miller. We got you off. <laughs>